Hey listeners, you know we love Bollet's Customized Bowls, where we get to create our own combo of bold flavors with grains, veggies, and protein. Like my current favorite of steak au jus with Brussels sprouts on a bed of forbidden black rice. That sounds great, especially when it's smothered in my favorite creamy garlic sauce. Mmm, que rico. That does sound great. You know what else sounds great? Their strawberry chia seed pudding. Delicious. That too, but... Also, the fact they now have locations in Aventura and Fort Lauderdale, both offering wraps featuring signature spice blends, sauces, and marinades. Okay, wait, esperate. So our listeners can enjoy a fresh and customized bolet bowl or wrap in Broward? <laughs> Así mismo. They can experience bolet at various locations throughout Florida and even Georgia and Virginia. Meaning we can all be part of Bolay's mission to inspire bold living through the power of fresh food. And who doesn't want to live boldly? Exactly. So visit bolay.com today to find your nearest location or place an order for pickup. There's no day like today to enjoy fresh food to fuel your life. The holidays are back. It's like we just finished going trico tri and now it's time for sun giving, el ho ho ho. But that also means it's time to find the perfect gift for your dad, husband, brother, carajo, even for yourself. You know where this is going. That's right, get them the perfect jean. I absolutely swear by these jeans from bandit black to midnight blue to light blue ice, which is also ripped because as we know, the only thing better than comfort is edgy comfort. <laughs> as a Miami boy, I even have their jean shorts Spoke in Miami, we need quality shorts that are stylish and comfortable. Pero ish, you're saying. My boyfriend, abuelo, tío, doesn't need any jeans this holiday season. To that I say, you're wrong, because every man does need the perfect jean. Pero okay, if that is true, we still got you covered. Just in time for winter, the perfect jean now has extremely comfortable hoodies. Made using organic cotton, these hoodies are just as comfortable as the jeans. They're perfect for those chilly winters up north, or if you're visiting DJ's house, because as we know, he keeps the temperature at a reasonable setting of tundra. So it is the holidays, which means we've got a gift for you. Use code PERO20 at theperfectgene.nyc for 20% off your order. Así mismo, PERO20 gets you 20% off the jeans, the hoodies, everything. Jeans and hoodies sounds like two great items to open under the tree to us. So this holiday, your khakis and get the perfect gift from the perfect gene. And don't forget to use code BETO20 for 20% off your order. Hey everyone, this is DJ. And this is Ish. And this is Season, season five, 5 of Pero Let, Let Me Tell You. Are we going to go bathe in the, the waters of Lake Minnetonka? Yes, but you're on the right track. That is from Purple Rain <laughs> from the soundtrack. Uh, well, on that on that note, welcome to episode 231. I love watching you get there because I don't always know if you will. But I do. <laughs> you do. Welcome, everybody. 231. 231. How is everybody post-Thanksgiving Black They're Friday? Stuffed. They're stuffed. Everybody has a food coma. Basically, we're lulling people to sleep. So I hope you're not driving. <laughs> How was everybody's Thanksgiving? I think everybody had a nice, lovely Thanksgiving. Did you? you know, well, I mean, <laughs> it's my favorite holiday. It's food on food on food. Why is Thanksgiving your favorite holiday? Just because of the food? or Yeah, because I'm a fat ass. That's why. Well, <laughs> well, you said, like, growing up, I know you've said that, like, you've been doing it at your sister's house for some years now. Yeah. And they do the traditional. But growing up, it was it traditional? So growing up, we would go to my my mom's uh, uncle's house. Tio um, Eduardito, Tio Minia. Tio Eduardito. Everybody has a Tio Eduardito. In Hialeah. Oh, so it was even better. It tasted better. But they did do, um, they would do the turkey. Uh-huh. They would, I don't remember if they had lechon. I just don't remember. I'm, I know they had ham. And of course they had, you know, arroz, frijole, yuca. Mm -hmm. Probably they had like mashed potato and corn, so it was a it was like a, a hybrid, right? A hybrid of you know cultures, which I think 
you know, we were talking about last week how, you know, <coughs> oh, the traditional Thanksgiving and this and that. But I do think there is a certain beauty to bringing, you know, the, the melding of cultures. Because at the end of the day, you know, it is just a day for giving thanks. And, you know, I'm not saying to do a Noche Buena on Thanksgiving. But, you know, if you have certain elements. You know what I would be interested to know? Because I really don't know. If, like, for example, people that are Asian American. Right. Who celebrate Thanksgiving. Right, right, right. If they have the mix of culture like we do. Right. Like, do they have, obviously, the traditional right. the uh, turkey Thanksgiving and all that. Right. fixings with, you know, a side of, you know, some Asian staples, right? right, right? right, right, right. I, would be, I would be interested to know. I would also be interested to know, and, like, it has to be in other Latin American countries for right. sure. Tu sabes que like somebody oh, making an, an Argentinian una... American has the turkey con una asado oh. parrillada. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> Screw the turkey, right? Oh, yeah. No, like, like, right, like, are, are, are there, is somebody out there making like tamales? <coughs> right. You know, on the, uh, as well as the yams or whatever. Right. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I think there's, there's, there's a beauty to that, right? Because it's, you know, as we've said, nowadays, especially, and I mean, this is what our show really is all about, you know, we want to celebrate both worlds. You know, it's no longer about becoming the melting pot. It's like, what is, what is it called now? Like a toss salad or whatever, yeah. where, you know, you retain those parts of your culture. And I, yeah. And, there's and, a beauty and, to that. And, and, and it is. And like, we always say, like, I, I, there's a part of me that gets frustrated, like, right. with con los viejos in my family, <laughs> that it's like, okay, can you for one, just one day, one day, one not day. have a rocco frijole, like one day, just one day, and pork, like one day. But at the other, on the other hand, it's also like, yeah, but we are different we're, right. we're you know we have our own thing going on so right. um so yeah so i'm glad we're talking about thanksgiving because i mean obviously we're going to talk about thanksgiving since today's black friday yes. um and tomorrow's small business saturday so if you yes. guys have a chance tpublic.com our store where we are having all of our shirts on sale we're posting it also on small business saturday jay wakefield starting at 1 p.m we will have bean pump pollo and there you go there you go. That that is our <laughs> plug-in for the day. So <clears throat> when this happened, I was like, I can't share this story with you because this is a podcast yes. story. You literally so, walked through the door saying that. Okay, so Tuesday. I'm at my parents' house on Tuesday. Okay. And generally, you know, uh at my parents' house, obviously, there's a, a lot of us for Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. although this year, for reasons I will not go into, there's been some division, but whatever. No quiero que me caiga con mi mal. Anyway, um, <laughs> but usually a lot of people come to eat, so it's a big turkey, so you know, you have to start defrosting it about two months before, <laughs> and you know, that whole <laughs> spiel, right? So I noticed that I, I was there Tuesday night, okay. and there was no turkey. Huh. And generally by Tuesday night... You got to have the turkey. Yeah, th yeah. We would... Uh, yeah. The turkey, th there's a process. Of course. They buy the turkey, usually they'll buy the turkey... <laughs> A few days before, like everybody else. But on Tuesday, they would usually take it out of the freezer claro. and put it in the sink. Right, because it starts to congelate. To start to defrost. Right. And then when it reaches a certain point of defrostation. <laughs> Not to be confused with deforestation. Deforestation. <laughs> yes, yes. Of defrost. Yes. A certain point of defrost. Then they put it in the fridge. Right? Right. So, I noticed that there was no turkey on Tuesday. So, I was like... The sink was bare. I was like, okay. <laughs> And I even told my mom, Tú me vas a hacer el bonito este año, because this is my mom for like the last 20 years has been doing the sweet potato casserole. Mm -hmm. And every year when she does it, it's like she's doing it for the first time. She's reading the recipe and she doesn't understand it. And she's like, Ay, soy una, estu una estupida. Le eché mucha azúcar. Le eché azúcar blanca. You know, like if she's never done it before. I'm surprised she doesn't right. just give up and go get a public right. skate. Right. And I always tell her every year, I love sweet potato casserole. And again, every year, she's like, Ay, pero a ti te gusta. Like, the, every year. Every year doesn't fail. So, so on Wednesday morning, you, you know this is an added piece of the puzzle with the whole cake. Yeah, yeah debacle, no, 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 right? it's all right. related. Okay. On Wednesday, on Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving, I call my father and I'm like, "Oye, el pavo," and she's like, "She's like, he's like, el pavo qué," and I'm like, "Usted no van a comprar un pavo," and he's like, "No, yo no sé," and I'm like. What do you mean you don't ¿Cómo say? que tú no sabes? And he's like, no, yo estaba esperando que tú me dijeras comprar el pavo. And I'm like, ¿cómo que tú estabas esperando que yo te dijera a, a comprar el pavo? 
The turkey at my parents' house was always a thing of my father and my grandmother. So this is the second Thanksgiving without my grandmother. Okay. But on tw in 2019, my grandmother actually was in the hospital in November, and she had just gotten out of the hospital mm -hmm. right around the time Thanksgiving rolled around. She had just gotten out of the hospital um, like the week before. So I told her, I will do the turkey this year, which is when I did the upside down turkey that I talked about last week. That was the only year that I really did the turkey at my parents' house with like the whole show. That you took control. Right. right. But my parents bought the turkey. It's just that on Thanksgiving, I'm the one who put it in the oven. So my father is like, pero no, pero nosotros vamos a comprar pavo, hacer pavo. And I'm like, pero el, el Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving. So then my mom gets the phone and they're on speakerphone. And my mom's like, pero, 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 ¿qué, qué pasa? Que tú quieres que yo, tú quieres que yo compre. Mamá, yo quiero que tú compres el pavo como ustedes hace 42 Thanksgiving. <laughs> lo están comprando. Pero, pero, pero tú quieres que yo compre el pavo. Pero tú vas a hacer el pavo, vas a, tú vas a hacer pavo. And I'm like, ¿y qué tú crees que nosotros vamos a comer mañana? And she's like, ay, no, 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 pero es que yo, yo, yo no sabía, yo no sabía, porque como que este año hay tantos cambios, yo no sabía. And she's like, no, 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 déjame, déjame escribirlo. And I see, I hear her, and I see her writing. I see her writing, even though I'm on the phone. She's like, okay, un pavo. She's like, ¿y qué más compro? And I'm like, pero ¿cómo que más compro? No, yo no sé lo que se come mañana. And I'm like, Stop. Wait a minute. I'm no, like, I'm stop. sorry. Wait, I'm like, wait, I'm like, wait, stop. wait. I told wait. them, stop. No, no, no. Wait. I literally told them, paren, paren de hablar. I go, ustedes me están bromeando a mí. Like, I told them, ustedes a mí me están bromeando. ¿Cómo es que tú no sabes qué comprar para Thanksgiving? You've only done 41 of them. This is going to be your 42nd Thanksgiving. Because my parents, since the first year they came from Cuba, they came in March. That November, they celebrated Thanksgiving. There's pictures of it. So this is their 41st, 42nd Thanksgiving, right? And, and como ella dijo, no, yo no sé, pero qué se come, qué vamos a hacer de comer. And I'm like, please tell me that you're kidding. And then my father starts screaming in the back, no, porque tú no tienes comunicación. Tú, tú no tienes comunicación porque tú tienes que haber llamado y decirnos a nosotros qué comprar. And I'm like, but I've never called you and told you to buy the turkey. Because it's Thanksgiving. You buy a turkey. Right? And, yet, and they've been doing it. They've always done it. No es que este año tú dices, you know what? I'm not going to do it, guys. You they, take it on. Right. They've always bought the turkey. Como te digo, the only thing I did in 2019 is that on Thanksgiving Day, I got to their house early and I go, oh, you I'll make it. it. Right. I'll make it. There's like this new way I want to try. Right. Right. They were talking to me like if this was a foreign holiday. Like, of like it was the first Thanksgiving. Culture of another <laughs> ethnicity that they had no clue about. Right? And, you know, it's like if they were celebrating, I don't know, Jewish Passover, right? That they have no clue what, what that entails, right? <laughs> like, no, no, pero que se come, que vamos a hacer de comida, que, que... And I'm like, what? What? So I, I and I would hear her, and she's the like, scribbling. And she's like, ¿y qué más compro? I'm like, no compres más nada, el pavo. And she's like, pero, pero, que vamos a hacer de comer? And I'm like, breathe. What do you like, mean, que vamos a hacer de comer? She blanked out. She's like, what do I mean? Okay, what else do we have for dinner on Thanksgiving? Right? Like, she had no clue. Like, again, like, if I was talking to her about another holiday, again, like Passover, Passover. Right? 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 I don't expect to know my parents know what you eat on Passover for right. them to know the, the Passover plate. Right. Right? With, like, the bone and the, I think it's celery, yeah. it's cilantro. I don't or, know. I don't know. But it went No, it's parsley and egg. Like, whatever. Well, I mean, that's Jewish, Right. right. No, 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 pero, pero un pavo. I hear her writing down. Un pavo. De cuantas libras. And I'm like, usually es una libra por persona. Right. So si van a ver 14 personas, compra un pavo de 15 libras. 15, 15 20, 16, yeah. Entre 15 a 20 libras. Ok, un pavo. ¿Qué más? And I'm like, bueno, lo que tú quieras hacer. I always make stuffing on my own. Right, That's right, something right, that right. I've always done. Bueno, lo que tú quieras. Ah, pero tú quieres que haga boniato. Yes, I told you yesterday that yo quería boniato. So, so when this was happening, I was like, "Yeah, no, this I is can't, like I this can't. is like the cake. This is, this is like this like, is the cake." And, and again, my parents are not that. I mean, they're old, but not that old. They're in their seventies. You know, my parents no son like guajiro. You know, no son no tan no tan right, right, right. Their forty second Thanksgiving, right? That they've always hosted. 
They've always hosted. Because right? me diga, bueno, again, like, I think siempre there was like se hizo... one or two years that my sister-in-law hosted. Okay, but but, but this is not a situation of yeah. we always did it for 27 years yes. at Fulano's yes. house and now yes. it's at ours. Yes. No, porque tú no tienes comunicación con nosotros. Porque tú no tienes que haber dicho que, te íbamos, que tú ibas a hacer un pavo. And I'm like, que iba a hacer un pavo, que iba a hacer un pavo. It's, it's Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Like, what were you going to eat tomorrow? Un boliche. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's next year's shirt, yeah. the Thanksgiving boliche. So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, that was uh, my pre-Thanksgiving. Listeners, review. did any of you have a Thanksgiving boliche? Yeah. I was like, I'm being punked. This is a joke. Robert and Neri, this is a joke. This is one of your many jokes. But then, jokes. see, these are the things that then happen that makes me wonder, what if Stephanie's right? Uh, no. Again, you know my parents. They're no, around. I know, I know, but these are but these things are the ones like, where I kind they, of they get off the phone and they hear me like get all round. They're like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> we got his number. I I want I mean, that, that to be the, the case. case I, I want like, totally that to be the case. Down, bow down and be like, mad respect. But we know that that's no, not. no. But 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 I want that to be. No, no, no. And then there was a moment that my mom was like, "Y compro Coca Cola." <laughs> <laughs> He compra Coca Cola, like, like, no clue, like, no clue. Like, are my parents in like a Twilight Zone oh, right yes. now? And I happen to call them when they are in a, like a. Everybody vortex. knows the Pilgrims had Coke at the first Thanksgiving. Yeah. Of course, you must have it. Yes. He compra una Coca Cola, <laughs> and I go, no, no, compra una, compra varia. That was my answer. <laughs> And then I hear, and then as I love, the, her writing down, see, Coca-Cola, hay un spray. I'm like, perfecto, un spray. Uh, this is wonderful. Yeah, yeah. When this was happening, as soon as I got off the phone with them, that I was like, my blood pressure was like 200 over 150. I was like, this is a great podcast fodder story. So, you know, there's always a silver balance, a silver lining deal. Wow. Yeah. That. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. How is everybody else's Thanksgiving? <laughs> well, I know one lady who's going to have a very good Thanksgiving this year. Um, Angela Alvarez. Do you know who Angela Alvarez is? I feel I should. Well, last week, Angela Alvarez, at the, at the, at the, at the, at the ripe old age of 95 years young, one best new artist at the Latin Grammys. Are you serious? For her first album. Was it recorded recently? Yeah. Um, so for those who don't know, Angela Alvarez, she's um, she's Cuban. She grew up on the island. And and there's a whole documentary about her a narrative Andy Garcia on I think it's on Tubi. And she, you know, she was on the island. As a child, she was she would sing and she would write her her songs, like she'd write poetry. And eventually, you know, as we all know, on the island, if you said you wanted to go in entertainment and you were a woman, your parents said, that's cute, but no. Right. So she basically, oh, hell no. yeah, or <laughs> on, a, on a nice day. So she basically tamped that down. Actually, no, but niña, tú estás loca. Tú estás loca. Tienes que estudiar algo de gente decente. Exactly. Um, so she, you know, she, she tamped that down. She got married. She had kids. Um, when she was about to come to this country, like literally the day before, they told her with her children, they said, no, you can't. And so her children had to come here as Pedro Pang. Um, so, you know, she went through a whole lot, but she never stopped writing. She never stopped writing and she never stopped, um, you know, putting her, her, her songs down in, in journals. And she had journals upon journals. And her grandson, I believe her grandson is like a record producer or something like that. And he found out that she sings and that I think she plays the guitar as well. And he was like, Abuela, you know, ¿por qué no hacemos algo con esto? And she's like, no, ¿pa qué ahora? Después. And he's like, you're 95. ¿Qué después ni después? Right. So she released the album. Um, and now she is a Best New Artist Latin Grammy winner. And, and, and I'm sure she's some type of uh, Guinness World Record. as She oldest, must be. I didn't even think about that. But yeah. Academy Award winner. Um, well, Academy winner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, or, or Grammy. At least Best New Artist. Yeah. <laughs> Minimum best new artist winner. I mean, if nothing else, but um, you got to give that woman next year a lifetime achievement award. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but yeah so and you know she lives in i think she's still in louisiana and i mean her her life you know obviously was was very hard and and she came to this country but i just i loved hearing that story and i was i i i was gonna give it as a last soda but i just thought you know what it's never too late to start and i think that's something that obviously you know number one there's a lot of caca going on in the world right now but that's a feel-good story and i think let's you know let's embrace those when we have them her speech was beautiful because you know, I mean, she's una señora, like she's ninety five years old, you know, and and it's like you and I have always said, you know, thanks to this podcast, which by the way, speaking of you know TikTok, um, I'm, I'm gonna try and get her for next year. Um, we've met so many people who've just kind of said fuck it and and gone and done something, thrown caution to the wind, and you never know, you know, you you've got to take those opportunities when when they pop up. So I don't know. I just wanted to bring her up. I thought she. I thought it was. I, and that was in the Latin Grammys. Yeah, the, Latin the Grammys. one hosted by Talia and her and 25 her twenty five outfits. Yes. Yeah, last and, week. And did they air the the award? Well, they aired the Latin Grammys. Yeah. No, but did they air the award? I believe so. Yes, because okay. I saw. I mean, I saw footage of it, so okay. I, I I'm assuming that they did. Wow, that's kind of awesome. Right. Wow, good for her. You know, again, her. so many times, you know, we're like, I, we're too old to do something, or we could never do that, you know, or or what. And again, granted, her her grandson being you know some type of record producer helps. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, it helps obviously, but you know, it's very easy to just kind of be like, I mean, yo, pa' qué? Why not? Like... Why not? Yeah, you know. Um, and she, you know, she recorded the song when she was younger, obviously, because you know. She was probably 94 when she recorded the album. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she was younger. You know, it's funny. As I'm scrolling um, through, uh, you know, online, I find this thing of a fisherman catches 67-pound goldfish. <laughs> and I'm thinking, is this like a goldfish that somebody threw in the river and was like, mm-hmm. see you later? And then it just went from there? Yeah. I mean. That's a big bowl. Yeah. 67 pounds so anyway so now that it's black friday are you doing black friday shopping so i am uh listeners as you listen to this i say this every year my sister and i you know it's for us it's not even about you know like oh the deals or whatever i mean it is to a degree but you know for us it's more about just our tradition that we just go out and you know we spend a couple hours together or driving around and, and hanging out um but to be honest with you dude black friday this year i think started in september why why do you say that because everybody had pre Black Friday, pre holiday deals, pre pre pre, like pre and the pre and the pre and the pre, you know. So, I don't even know what the sales are going to be like. Because remember, with the economy being what it is, everybody was kind of worried. So they're like, okay, let's space this out. Let's start the pre Black Fridays, you know, end of October, beginning of November, right? So that people have time, and if they have to, you know, finance or what have you. So, I don't even know if there's any good deals or maybe it's the things that are good deals this year i'm not in the market for right but um but we always go to bath and body works because they always have great like buy three get three and then on top of that they allow you to use coupons and my sister collects them all year long and she stacks you know it's buy three get three but twenty dollars if you spend 20 and then a free anti back if you spend no sec and so we i don't know how she does it but we always leave bath and body works looking like we're stocking up for a war so truth be told I have never, ever done a Black Friday sale. No, I know you've said this before on I, the show. Like I, I, I can't. Like I, it's not that and, bad. and I know, I know it's different now. It's not. I know it's, it's different not now. What I, it was I've, when we were kids. I've always said this. I don't recommend this for everybody. Everybody is always like freaking out. Oh my god! Oh my god! I have so many presents. Okay, I have a kid now, so mm-hmm. you can be like, well, but you don't have kids, and there's a lot of kids. Uh, in my inner circle, mm-hmm. whether it's with other friends or family or whatever, I have a huge fit. I mean, I have a lot of people to buy gifts for. I usually, a week before Christmas, go to the mall, and I'm done in three hours. Yeah, I can't do that because I, I, I like start making my list of people and what I want to get them, like maybe October. In the sense that, because I like to sit and think and be like, okay, what is Fulano into? Okay, let me look and see what I can find and something unique and something, you know, very distinct. I'm, I, 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 I like to... I, I don't like to just show up and be like, okay, I'm just going to go to Target today and get rid of everybody. Nope. Uh, that's what I do. And I always get great <laughs> gifts for people and they love it. Uh, look, m- like for example, my <clears throat> my my niece, she's into anime, yep. right? And 
for a few years now, I forgot which character she was in. Like, I would try to find her stuff online mm -hmm. until one day she almost told me, just get me a, a gift certificate to Hot Topic. Oh, yeah. See, I can't get people gift cards. Right. But she asked this. Yeah. Like, it, it just, I'm like, no. Right. Like, if I don't she, like giving cash. I don't like giving. If she asked me this, like, I'm like, okay, this is what you want. The same with my nephew. My nephew's like, oh, just give me a card to the Nike store. I'm like, okay. Because I would always get him, like right, I would get him gift. different things, right? And and you know they were like straight out told me what they wanted. I'm like, okay, I mean this is this is what you're asking for. It's yeah. not me imposing it on you. No, I'm going. I'm actually my older nephews this year. I was like, okay, what do you guys want? So they're being they're they're very like you know. He, I told him, give me a list of like seven to ten things. That way I can at least pick one or two things, and it'll still be a surprise. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's that's my element. Like whenever my mother every year she's like, "Ay, mi hijo, no sé qué comprarte. Mándame unas cosas que tú quieres." I always tell her, and she never listens. Here is a list of fifteen things. You don't have to get me all fifteen things, but this way, I'm still surprised by what shows up under the tree, because I enjoy being surprised. I like opening up a gift, not to open up a gift and be like, "Oh, it's the sec the six things that I told you exactly what I wanted." Yeah, I can go well, buy it I'm myself. Su I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised to see what, like, for example, my parents got wrong. My parents will still get me like a Liz Claiborne shirt because that's clearly my style. They still make those? I don't know, but they'll find one at Marshalls. <laughs> the one, the like, one. like, like two years ago, it was for either my birthday or for Christmas. My parents got me un par de mocasine, and I'm like, okay, you. I'm like, when have I ever worn this? Anybody that knows... Were you knows, cosplaying the Freedom Trail? Anybody that knows me knows that this is not my style. No. This is not something, you know, that I would wear. Did like, they mean to grab sandals? Why would you think that I... I mean, obviously, I didn't tell them this, but it's like... Because I don't want to sound like an... Right, 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 right. I'm like, but why? Well, I mean, I've told you that with my parents, my father in particular, you know... <laughs> He wishes that I dressed from Brooks Brothers, right? Right, because you know, because that's his dream, right? Yeah, right. Like you know what I've told my parents. This is like very morbid, <laughs> but whatever. I've told my parents. What you want to be buried in? I've told my parents, Mira, if God forbid something happens to me, do not send me in the to the next life in a suit. You put me in a T-shirt that I like. <laughs> do not put me in a suit. See, I would put you in a suit, but not with a button-down shirt. Right, so I get stuck in purgatory <laughs> no, in no, a no, suit? No, 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 no. Well, okay. Hey, why are you going to purgatory? But no, that will be my purgatory. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. No, but I'm thinking, but see, this is where I'm going. Like, I think of it in terms of, like, like a cool, you know, like a concert tour t-shirt. Right. But then with, like, a blazer. Right, and because you think that that's what my parents would put me in? No, 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 no. I'm saying that's what, when, I, when in my, my mind. My, my parents would fucking put a pañuelo in my, like, suit. Like, <laughs> with my initials. Pocket square. Yeah. <laughs> Like I like I tell them like God, God forbid you know <laughs> knock on knock, knock on everything you know because you know th th my father would give what he doesn't have for me to dress like from Brooks Brothers or right. uh, what's J Joss A Bank jo I don't know how to pronounce that store <laughs> or Mengwada House and Mengwada House <laughs> I've told you I've said this story on on um, on the podcast some years ago we went on a family cruise and oh, yeah. on formal night. I wore a tux with some badass Jordans, and I looked awesome. Like, I, I have to tell you that it was one of those days, you know, when you see on TV, like, people are like, uh, especially celebrities, oh, you know, I felt really confident in that. Right. Like, I felt really confident in that, because I was, like, in great shape, you know, I, I was like, it was the a peak good of time. Peaks. It was a good time in my life, and I'm like, I am rocking this tux with Jordans. I will never forget that when I, you know, I met my parents like in the promenade deck or wherever right, right, right. Captain Tonight was going on. That da la casualidad, when the elevator opens up, my father was in the elevator lobby. When that <laughs> elevator opened up and he saw that I was wearing a tux with like with sneakers. Jordans, he did one of those que me miró para de, de pie a cabeza and he gasped. And he's like, ay Dios mío. And I'm like, first of all, you're wearing a tux. I'm wearing, one. It's it's and it's on a captain side of a cruise ship. Yeah, you're not because at some. You know what? You know what? You're not at look, a charity event. Look, I love the whole suit 
and 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 um, sneaker combination. Mm -hmm. But for example, if I got invited to a wedding at a really fancy place, right. I wouldn't do that because like, I feel like if it's black tie, yeah, no, yeah, and, yeah. and I feel that like that's a little bit like in a way stealing thunder. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It, that's not my day. That's a day for somebody else. Right. Like I, I don't need to make a fashion statement. You know what I mean? Right, like. Right, right, right. On, like something like that, right. but like on a freaking captain's night on a cruise ship. I mean, come on, cut me some slack. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like we were sailing on the Queen Mary. We were sailing on the freaking into Voyager of the Seas or whatever from Royal Caribbean. You know, <laughs> but like it was like, <gasps> and then you know, of course, my brother in a nice suit, como casino, you know, his nice I don't know monochrome tie, and I'm like, oh, I like a monochrome tie. Okay, Regis Philbin. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I think it looks nice. No, I, I, I it's just, it, I, it, no, no, no. Listeners, <laughs> do your parents still <laughs> give you shit for what you wear, even if you're in your 30s or 40s? I feel like that never goes away. No, it doesn't. It doesn't at all, at all. Pero But I, niña, tú te vas a poner eso. <laughs> sí, me lo voy a poner. <laughs> I, well, you know, it's only about as judgmental as, you know, having the World Cup in Qatar. Oh. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Everybody knows the holidays can be a time of great joy and togetherness with the food, parties, and family. Pero they can also be a time that causes us to feel anxiety, stress, or even depression. And let's face it, having your tia tell you que cambies la cara during dinner doesn't exactly help. What you need, and maybe your tia también, is a gift to yourself. The ability to speak with a professional about your experiences. Enter BetterHelp. A customized online therapy provider, BetterHelp offers therapy options that align with your time via phone, video text, or even live chat sessions with a certified therapist. BetterHelp's customized approach matches you with a therapist in under 48 hours based on your needs and creating the opportunity to help you better understand yourself. And as a special offer for Pero Let Me Tell You listeners, you can get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash Pero. It's already more affordable than in-person therapy, and now you can save on your first month. There's even a gifting option if you'd like to help someone you care about understand the benefits of therapy in their life. We should all have a happy holiday season, and BetterHelp has helped millions take the first step in that path. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Pero. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this podcast and this episode. Did you see what happened to Maluma? I did. What do you think about that interview? Okay, well, well I, I was yeah. gonna say, yeah, go ahead and recap. Like, uh, well, I mean, there. Well, for our listeners who don't know, the right. World Cup is going on right now yes. as we speak, yeah. and for years uh, there have been people complaining that, uh, that you know it's in Qatar, and for years there have been people complaining that. It shouldn't be in Qatar due to their, you know, they have a terrible record on human rights violations. Mm. Um, being gay, there is still a crime, right. um, so on and so forth. So they people have had issue with that for quite some time. Mm. My personal opinion about that, um, yeah, I've had an issue with that. Remember, I was the person. That, I mean, I'm an OG on this. Like in 2001, when right. Beijing got awarded right, 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 the, the Olympics, Olympics yeah, for yeah, yeah. 2008, yeah. I was like screaming mm -hmm. bloody, mur yeah. you know, murder. You apply you know? this backwards and forwards. Yes, yes I was yes. like, they shouldn't be in Beijing and be right. in China. I mean, okay, obviously back then there wasn't social media, so no, you know, nobody cared. Have a platform, yeah. but you know. Do I think that do, is there a problem with that? Of course there is, right? right? I mean, w with Qatar in particular, there was. Th this is not like this is not new. N well, this is not a secret that Qatar paid off FIFA to host the World Cup, and a whole bunch of people had to resign some years right. ago because they did an investigation and they found that FIFA is one of the most corrupt entities there are. No surprise, surprise to no one. Yeah. So we know this, right? As far as the whole thing with Maluma goes, so for you listeners who didn't know, this week Maluma performed or was at the World Cup. He was. I, and, I don't know if he performed, uh, he? but he was at the he World Cup. He was there. Cup, he was there. Right, and people. He was doing an interview, and they started asking him, you know, about other celebrities that had boycotted Qatar, right. um, Shakira being one of them, and you know why was he there? Here's my thing on it. I think they were picking on Maluma when there's a lot of celebrities that are there 
and other celebrities that have gone to as equally mm -hmm. controversial, mm -hmm. um, you know, events. So putting the whole weight of this on Maluma. Well, but Maluma is, was, a, but, but the other ones weren't being interviewed. Right. But be, well, that's where I'm going. Putting the whole weight of this on Maluma isn't necessarily fair because again, there's been a lot of, I mean, look, there's, there's, and these aren't public events. There are a lot of, especially singers that appear for different like sultans and different. Oh, all you know, the time. Russian um, oligarchs, oligarchs yeah. that are paid Saudi millions princes upon millions upon yeah, yeah. millions of, yeah. of, of, of and these are like top tier like yeah, yeah, A-list yeah. singers, yeah, yeah. right? That you know sing for these people in like private events and. You know, these you don't are find people out people right? with some shady, shady yeah, shady dealing, shady right, past. So right, right. to me, this is sort of similar. So yes, I don't think it's fair to put that all in Maluma because there's a lot of celebrities that do that, and you can make you could certainly make a criticism about celebrity culture in general, supporting and kind of walking a fine line right. with this. But on the other hand. He also, as a public figure, not only a public figure, somebody who right now Maluma's really hot. You yeah. know, Maluma's right now in the in the stage of his career. He's been for the few day few years that he's on top of his game, right? See, see, see. Um, he's at his peak right now. Um, he also should have probably, especially if he wasn't performing, given an interview because this is a fair game question, right? Right. So it's I it, do wonder though, because you know, I mean, as we know, there when you when you work with publicists, you know, for interviews, there are certain things that they'll be like, okay, just be sure to stick to these topics. So I I I will say, not that it makes it right or wrong, but I just wonder if that was one of the agreements prior that the journalist then kind of. Probably, or maybe it didn't come up because since he wasn't performing, maybe they didn't think they were going to ask him that line of questioning. Mm -hmm. You know, they would have been like, oh, who are you right. rooting for? You right, know? right. I will say him walking away and being like, you know, oh, you're rude. I'm like, well, I don't think he was being rude, Maluma. He was doing his job. Maluma, baby. You know. Pero, I mean, it, I mean, look, it, it's one of those things that like. Well, you heard what happened with, with, um, with the alcohol, right? That they don't allow people uh, at first. At first they were going to, and then they weren't, and then they were, and then literally like forty eight hours before they were like, no. And I'm gonna go on record as a marketer right now, not as a podcast host. If I was Budweiser, I'd be screaming bloody murder. And next year, you would either have to, or next World Cup, we would have to have a very serious conversation about whether or not. Well, the next World Cup is going I'm to be going here. to. <laughs> but no, 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 no. But it's not about that. It's about we're going to have to have a serious conversation because when I enter into these contracts, there's agreements and there's exclusivities there that you need to comply with when I am paying you for this. And if you do not, then you, I, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping well, well, I'm, there, there has to be some degree of, I don't want to say breach of contract because that's, that sounds more serious, but some type of like, guess what guys, the next one, yeah, I'm not paying the full price. You're going to, I'm going to pay half because you're essentially going to comp me the, the exposure and the bullshit that I had to go through now. So another thing, and that I hope I've, their marketing team takes into the I've heard about stuff going on here. So They've released sort of screenshots or like, I don't know if it's policy books on how specific for several things. But the comment I'm going to make is to like pride uh, merch or rainbow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, there was a reporter who got questioned. Right. Yeah. So apparently there's been something leaked that showed that like in terms of the personnel and the people working this that um, – that they're gonna allow and tolerate people wearing whatever shirt with like rainbow or pride, you know, mm -hmm. emblems or signage. Um, but there was a post this week uh, of of a journalist who was wearing like a, it a was one like love a, armband. A, 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 no. Well, the one that I saw, he was wearing like a soccer a soccer ball, and then there was a rainbow around the soccer ball. Oh, okay. And he was told that he can't go inside, and he was questioned. So. My question or topic of conversation. That what? That do Qatar you think, said one thing and they did whatever the fuck they wanted? Well, no. But do you think, whether it's uh, a pride emblem or whatever, that the host nation doesn't tolerate or doesn't accept whatever? Do you think it's correct for you to be out there and wearing it, um, even if you know that the host country is not that's not something that is mm -hmm. accepted or tolerated there 
Or do you like, okay, I'm in another country. These are their norms as so, as wrong as it may be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So like, I, like, like if you go into the Vatican, you know you have to cover up right. or, or what have you. So I'm of two minds with this, right? I think that as, you know, if we're talking just in general, like you should be respectful of other people's cultures and to whatever degree that that means that to you, yes. But in this instance, in this instance, where they essentially gave FIFA guarantees that that would not be a problem. Okay, I'm gonna show you. Well, you said you said I'm, again. I'm talking about specifically because of this. Because if if they came out and said to whatever extent, well, you know, it, for this it's okay. We're gonna be okay with it for now. All right, you know what? Show me you're okay with it. Well, here here's what what I think about that. I think that if you're a host nation, which <laughs> let's talk specifically about. Um, you know, gay issues or like pride, uh, human rights, whatever, you know, uh, emblems or whatever, whatever the host nation stand on that is, is. And I would say that going there as a private citizen, as a tourist at a regular time of the year, I think that that's something that like, I would be very, very cognizant, very, yeah. you know, discretionary about yes. not because I'm hiding who I am and you know, my, my truth and my, well, whatever. because you're also there as a private self, citizen, as but, a tourist, you don't know what's going to happen, right. but I'm in another country with a very different culture with very different, you know, cultural norms, right. you know, as may, as much as I disagree with them. So if I'm going there as a tourist, a private citizen outside of the whole World Cup of it all, outside or of any of it, all, just or... a random. Uh, it's it's. I I want to go to Qatar for whatever for in May, you right, know, right, right, of whatever right, year. Right. Okay, then I can't be too upset or surprised that they're doing this to me. Right. Right. However, if you are inviting an international event like a World Cup, like an Olympics, yep. whatever international event it is, that you have people from all over the world, from all different cultures, you need to better shut the fuck up. Right. And whoever comes, comes. And for whatever amount of time, whether for those it's a week, two weeks, two weeks a you month, just, whatever, you need to you suck, suck it up. Suck it up. Yeah. Because you can't have your cake and eat it too. But you, that's exactly what you, they've you done. Can't, you, can't, you can't have a world-class event where you have... M- Thousands and tens of thousands of people from around the world coming to your country or your host city because you want the whole world to come to this. But then when they come, oh, no, 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 not no. Not you. Not that way. No, not no, this. Not no, that. No, no, no. You that. can't do this and this and this and this and this. Right. Okay, then don't host your fucking event. Then don't, right, don't host a fucking event. Right. I mean, that's very simple. Don't host it. Right. Right. Right now, again, if you go on your own as a private citizen and you're wearing a big old pride flag, you know, uh, you know, you walk in there, right. it's uh, not with right. My pride flag, and they tell me, "Hey, put that away." Okay, as much as I'm, you know, I, it's not right. Right, but it's not right. But it's like, okay, I, I, I can't. I don't have a leg to stand on. Like, right, I, it, that's the, the laws of their country. Doesn't apply here. Right, like, right, right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could, I could carry a copy of the Constitution, but it doesn't travel. The Constitution doesn't travel well. No. <laughs> no, not to not 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 to Qatar, right? No, no. Right, but for an event like that, it's like f you. It's yeah, like no, I agree. No, no, no. I agree. You, you, you don't get to make billions out of this and then tell the people that are coming to your country that are spending all this money, which is the reason why you're hosting it. Right, right, right. right. Because that, that's not let's let's not, not sugarcoat it. Yeah, yeah. let's. You're be not clear. doing this to be an ambassador of goodwill. Right. These host countries and these countries that you know host the Olympics and all that, they either do it to make money. Although most hunt- con- cities that host <laughs> Olympics are left bankrupt. But they do it for like world prestige and for the know, tourism. There's a ca- for tourism and there's a certain cachet about being a, an Olympic city, right. right, or a World Cup city um, or whatever. Right. So yeah, no, you don't get to do that. You Did you hear do. what este inalfabeto of the head of FIFA said? I think it was today. <laughs> <Inalfabeto. laughs> Did you hear? No. I'm just gonna read you the headline. I mean, I read the article, but I'm gonna read you the headline. FIFA president Gianni Infantino admits he would be open to North Korea hosting a World Cup as he claims, quote, only engagement can bring real change. Despite unsuccessful trip to ask if, quote, they were ready to host part of a women's World Cup with South Korea. That's all I have to say about that. That to me says everything about FIFA that you would ever need to know. And if that were to happen, I feel really bad for every team who that's the goal to get there. But if that was to happen, I really think that the teams, the players, the countries, somebody, at that point, they all need to say, no, thank you. Yeah, 
Are you serious? Yep. North Korea. North Korea. This wasn't a typo where they said South Korea. No, 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 no. And I know that he's Swiss, so you know he probably thinks that he's neutral, but no. I to saga to era bueno. I mean, in that in that case, if North Korea, I wonder if he really believes his own bullshit. It's like, man, I hope that everybody that goes like wave that constitution, wave that pride flag, wave that trans flag. Everyone should go. Everyone should just go as a drag queen. Wave the BLM. Yeah, like everything. Wave every flag. Everything. You know what? Put those riot pussy hats on. Kim Jong Un, you want you wanted people to come to your country. Well, here you go. Toma. Here you go. And all of us have video phones because you know you can't record anything. In, in North Korea. That's right, yeah. You, Unless you you're Dennis Rodman. Well, yes. Right, right. You can't record anything. Right. So here we're recording everything. Oh my God. Are you serious? <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, that's terrible. Yes, sir. That's terrible. And again, I wonder if he believes his own bullshit about how like, because he says it, he's like, this is about, you know, because World Cup is about uniting and bringing people together and that's how you bring about real change. And I'm like, no. <laughs> right? Bringing the World Cup to... To North Korea. To North Korea. Yeah, right. That, that's... Show me you're corrupt without showing me you're corrupt. Okay. Well, maybe if you say it enough times, you might believe it. There's not enough, I don't know, grace mocks in North Korea. <laughs> Are you going for a specific team? I am not. I have to say, I, I'm not, generally, I'm not a football person. But see, I went with the right term because we're talking World Cup. I think it's only fair. El Mundial. I'm not a big... I'm very much... I, I don't even know who's I playing. I don't, I don't follow I don't know who's football playing. much. But I I always go for, for football. I always go for England. Are they? Are they? I really don't even know who's I don't playing. Even, I don't know at this point if they are. I really don't know who's playing. I know. I, I would be interested to see how how viewership is doing because I I know that not just here but across the globe because I know a lot of people were like quote unquote protesting. You know, it's funny how Telemundo it's like all the programming and everybody and on American television it's like what there's a World Cup going on. There's like they're kicking a ball somewhere. I don't know. Right. That's something that has always like especially. <laughs> um, you know, having been fortunate enough to have traveled so much, yeah. that's something that's always like boggled my mind. How like it's not a thing here. Yeah, the U.S. We don't get soccer or Robbie Williams. It's just <laughs> yeah, nor exciting McDonald's menus. No. The rest of the world gets like all these McDonald's menus with all these like really cool stuff. Like I'll never forget that when I went to Greece, that a freaking gyro, a, right? And you know, it probably wasn't as good as like it was horrible, but whatever. A real gyro, yeah, right? It's kind of like I mean, do you remember here in Miami? There. I'm the sure Cuban sandwich, was regional, the Cuban sandwich, yeah. the McDonald's, the hot tub in regional. I don't remember. No, it had to be. Do you think that the McDonald's in Indianapolis, Indiana was, you know, serving well, a, I mean, a, a, well, sa- a sandwich Cubano? I was going to say, listen, if there's one thing we know, it's that white people love to say, oh, my God, I'm eating a Cubano. I'm eating a Cubano. So maybe. Ugh. Maybe. Oh, my God. Es como que me metan un piñazo por la cara. <laughs> oh, are you from Cuba? No. <laughs> are you having a Cubano? It's like, no, I'm Cuban. Cuba, Cuba has an English translation. <laughs> Oh. It's sort of like William and Guillermo. Yeah. Yeah, nobody ever says like, you know, oh, are you from Argentina? No, they're like, are you from Argentina? Yes. Just calm down. I don't need you. Just stop. Stop. Full yeah. stop. Yes. You're having a Cubano. Oh, oh, my God. You go have a fucking Cubano. Oh, imagine going going to Sandwich and be like, oh, hi. I'm here to have the Cubano. I'm sure that that's happened. Of course that's happened. I'm sure it's happened. <laughs> That that I just said, the William to Guillermo, that's so annoying. What? <laughs> because in English, names are proper nouns. True. Right? So that is your name through thick and thin. That is true. That is true. Pero como dice, no, el príncipe Guillermo. I'm like, ¿quién es el príncipe Guillermo? Yeah, like, I, 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 don't, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Who's Guillermo? No, you know how you say Guillermo in English? Guillermo. Guillermo. <laughs> like... Yeah, when he shows up at the Oscars, we don't say, and here's William Del Toro. Oh my God, you know what would be hilarious? If you have, like, two boys and you name them William and, and Guillermo. Guillermo. If they're twins. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I might go get, I, I might have children just to so, do that. So wait, does that mean that, like, if, if, if here in the United States or in an English-speaking country, you name your two twins, William and Guillermo, that means that when you go to, like, Spain, you have Guillermo and Guillermo. Guillermo. Oh, it's like Simon and Simon. <laughs> Wait, what's the other one? Um, 
Pedro. Uh, is it Peter? Peter? Peter is Pedro. Yeah. It's not the same name. <laughs> yeah, Pedro, Pedro Pan, Peter Pan. Yeah, it's not the same name. Verdad, duh. It's not the same name. Okay, you know what's so funny? <laughs> that when you say Peter Pan in English, the Peter Pan flight, like when you say Pedro Pan in Spanish, it's, I don't it, think... It's something else. I don't... I know what you're talking about, obviously, but I don't think the Peter Pan flights. Right, right. <laughs> Pedro Pan. ¿Quién es Pedro Pan? ¿Quién es Pedro Pan? <laughs> Some bread distributor? <laughs> How has there never been a bread distributor called Peter Pan? Ben Peter Pan. <laughs> Disney has that locked in. I guess. No, that has to be in the copyright uh, public okay, domain. Which one else? Which one else in Spanish? So is Guillermina William Wilhelmina? Wilhelmina. That is. It's Wilhelmina. Is it? it is. It's Wilhelmina. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> so Wilhelmina modeling would be Guillermina modeling. <laughs> La modelo de Guillermina. Guillermina. Yeah. That's like messed up. Yeah. Messed up. Like, I guess in Spanish, proper nouns are not a thing. Like, Well, you know, we can't be bothered. We change everything <laughs> as we see fit. Fuck it. <laughs> oh, How about so it? That's so funny. Uh, so. So, did you hear this week... Um, and this is a bit of a business news. Oh. So listeners, buckle up. We're Forbes now. That, uh, <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> that a, for the Disney Corporation. Oh, yes, yes. Reinstated yeah. Bob Eager. And for those of Is it Eager? Or is it Iger? I, I, this is Here one of those moments. Proper now. Yeah, this is one of those moments where I've. No, I think it's Bob Iger. Okay. It is Bob Iger. Okay. Because I'm thinking about like when he's been on The View and on CBS Sunday morning. <laughs> oh, had been a while. Oh, wow. For those of you who take a drink whenever he says that, that's a double shot. Had been a while. Um, so for those listeners who don't know, Bob Iger was the CEO of the Disney Corporation for years and years and years. Yeah. Um, and then he retired, I think, like two years ago. And the guy who was now... Did he retire or did he... No, he retired. Oh, okay. He retired. okay. I thought he was um, asked to leave. No, not at all. Oh, okay, he was. Okay. Um, he even chose his successor. Oh, which is the the guy he just replaced. Yes, I forgot his name now. Um, and he was brought in this week, and a lot of people were like really, really happy. Yeah. Um, I mean, which is sort of unprecedented that a corporation would bring somebody back like that, like that. Yeah. Um, but then again, it is Disney. It's Disney. Yeah. So, so. One of the main things that Disney is happening right now is that apparently they're losing a lot of money with their streaming service. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, because I keep hearing about how they've been adding and adding and adding. Yeah, so. but apparently there's something going on with, the, with Disney Plus that uh, I don't know if it's not making as much money as it's supposed to. Okay, probably. But it's always the projections. Or, or it's costing them more than what it is. But it has to do with Disney Plus. Okay, they're probably producing too much content. Right. So my comment to Bob if I were okay. to be able to we know you listen Bob sit down with Bob is <laughs> Disney really needs to do something about their price increases at the parks at the parks at the parks because it's gotten, he's, he's the head of everything yeah of the Disney uh, uh, okay, okay right it's gotten out of hand yeah. like it's gotten to the point that most people can't afford it because they like raised I told their, you the they minute I saw that they were having layaways price, they raised their price now again, I was gonna say, didn't they just? Yeah, they, now I mean, this, we talked this about past it. Yeah, week, and I think it becomes effective in December. The Magic Kingdom on certain days is gonna be over one hundred and eighty dollars per person for one day pass. For one day pass, that's ridiculous. So, so you're talking now that for a family of four, it's eight hundred dollars. It's almost eight hundred dollars. No, it's eight hundred dollars. Add taxes. Yeah, for a one day pass. Okay, that that is, and they haven't eaten anything. They haven't. Gotten hotel, right? That's they haven't your one day pass. Travel, they haven't point. traveled there. Walking through the door, right? And that, and look, I understand. This, first of all, this doesn't have to do with inflate the inflation no, right now because Disney's been upping right. the prices. But like I every understand the natural progression of inflation, right? We can't sit here and be like, "Oh my god, I remember when Disney was like twenty dollars." Right, right, right. Okay, right, we can't. Those days are gone. Twenty dollars, right? Todo sube de precio, and that's understandable, right? And 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 I do understand that they have to invest a lot of money into reimagining their parks and keeping them updated That's and true. current. It has to stay fresh, that. yeah. So, you know, you see Cost of doing business, going, right. Right? But the the guy who Bob uh, Iger replaced said that as long as people pay for it, they're going to keep increasing their prices. Which well, yeah. I, which I understand is From like, a business perspective, that's yes, like, yeah. Yes, but there has to be a point where they, they, it's just out of hand. 
I get it, but it's supply and demand. As long as, as long as you, uh, it, he's right. What incentive do I have to lower the price if every time I raise it, you guys keep buying it? No, yeah. And attendance increases, and attendance, you know, like, like, I mean, well, they have said or whatever. Happened, you know, there's no incentive that for you to they stop. are out to get the more affluent visitor. They want Disney to be a more affluent um, experience. They actually they want it to be an experience. Right from the lodging to mm-hmm. well, the park experience. well, ideally they want you to be there. Like they want you to be almost trapped right there and spend more money. But right. they are going after the more affluent consumer. They would have to because they spend more money there and all that. They weren't like us, you know, that we would just <laughs> drive there, go in. What are we doing know, this weekend? Nothing. Stand Let's at go. Motel Six and you know call it a day. Right. Right. Um, and it's just it's it, I, I just think. Obviously, profits are important, but this really is one yeah, of those Yeah, but this things, is not a company that's hurting uh, uh, overall. Right, but this really is oh, like geez. something that it, it, it's gotten out of hand. And if their goal is to sort of market to the more affluent visitor, they're doing a great job at it. Because unfortunately, there's a lot of people that are priced out of Disney at this point. Is there an equal... Is there an equal price increase at Disneyland as well? Yes. Okay. Usually Disneyland's are first. Really? Yes. Oh, I would think Disney World was yeah. first. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and it's it's just I, I think it's I think it's like immoral. Like it, well, it, it, I, I, it's you so know, it so goes that goes against it goes against Disney's and by that I mean Walt. Yes. It goes his, against that his his thing of. Creating this place for you know for families and for yes. everyone, it's becoming just you know the haves and the have-nots. And, and now, like everything about it is such a problem. Like you have to buy your ticket in advance. The, they don't all, no longer have the fast pass now. It's like the Disney Genie, which you have to pay additional for per person, right? Ridiculous. And there's certain like like um, no, Space not, Mountain is not part of the Disney Genie. Where you could get the... Oh, so you have to make the line. No, it's a la carte. So I think that if you want to skip the line to Space Mountain, you have to pay like $20. Oh, Even wow. if you bought the Disney Genie. It's not part of the package. It's not part of the package. Because they know that those are like the main attractions. Right, right, when right. the Tron roller coaster opens, you know, you probably, it'll probably be like $100 to skip the line, you know? Right. Um, because obviously that's, that's like, for example, I haven't been to MGM... Well, I still call it MGM Studios. <laughs> that's how long it's been. I haven't been to Hollywood Studios in a minute. And... One of the reasons I haven't been is because obviously when I go, I want to see Star Wars. Yeah. It's so cool. And everybody that has gone has been like, oh, we waited like three hours. I cannot wait three hours with Twist Tr- Tristan. There will be a tsunami in Florida. Like That is why I'm glad that we went during COVID. Yeah. But but you've heard this from people, right? Oh, no, I know. But that's why. we had. I told you. We went during COVID because we had, like, that January of 2020, we had gone to Disney. We bought the three-day pass, but we only used two. And then when Disney opened up again, like, that September or whatever it was, Jose and I were like, well, no, we still have a day left. We're not going to – don't leave money on the table. And I was like, okay, but we're going to take advantage of the fact that, you know, the park is at, like, a third of capacity or whatever, and let's go to Hollywood Studios – to go right, to Star the Star Wars. Wars thing. I would love to, like, the, the whole thing when all the stormtroopers come out. And, like, it, when Darth Vader comes out, I know I'll probably, like, get weak in the knees. Like, I know I go, que va malo papele. Right? It but so it's, cool. like, it's, like, I, I am still not ready to make a three-hour line. And yeah. I know it's going to be for a while with a freaking kid that is, like. No, pero espérate. On top of that, I don't know about now, but when, start, when, when Galaxy's Edge first opened, you had to, people were showing up at the park at, like, four in the morning. That's to crazy. get the queue, to get in, the, because you have to be obviously on property to sign in and to register, to get the space in the line, okay, like at 4 or 5 in the morning to get the space in the line at 9 a.m. when the park opens or what have you, to then, like you said, and then by the Run. time, <laughs> right, and then 11 a.m. is when you find, you know, like, because the line is the line, you know, 9 a.m. Right. means that that's when you can make the line. Right. That doesn't mean that you're going to walk right through. Right, right. It's. It's like insane, insane. I I don't know. I don't know if like long term this is gonna have effects because another thing is that a lot of people have been complaining about like the Disney experience. I mean, Disney has a very, 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 very high, high bar, bar yeah. of of what the experience should be, yeah. and there's a lot of people that have been complaining about it. So I don't know if like maybe there's still like 
Growing this pains. Post no, but in a post COVID world, there's everybody still wants to get out there and like do stuff, and then you know maybe in a couple of years, like everything oh, will level off. Okay, like the demand will plateau, right? Especially uh, if the prices because, keep going up. Because I mean, at this point, for example, of a Miami, like mm-hmm. we're talking about living in Miami, yeah, 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 right, where we don't have to pay for for airfare. Yeah, it's it's right, 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 right yeah. Going to Disney for a weekend with a family of four. Will cost you more than going on a cruise for a week. That's true, right? And you don't have as much activities and and things because and... you could go on a cruise for a week for like six hundred dollars. Yeah, and that includes your food, your lodging, your transportation. <laughs> well, we did that. Include yeah, that includes everything. <laughs> we did that includes everything. <laughs> right, right. Whereas in Disney, right for a weekend. So if you're going to two parks, right for a family of four, an admission. It's about two hundred dollars per person, right? Take. So, so that's almost eight hundred dollars with tax and everything. It's almost right. eight hundred dollars for one day and just admission right. for a family of four. That's eight hundred dollars. Two days, it's sixteen hundred dollars just to go to two parks. We're not you talking haven't, about you haven't slept anywhere. You haven't slept anywhere. You haven't eaten anything. You haven't bought anything. Right? right? You could go on a cruise for a week, and you could go on a nice cruise. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> not a weekend. You you're, could you're go like on a, a escape. right, like, right. You're, you're going on like Royal Caribbean or NCL or Carnival, right. like. And you can get like one of the balcony penthouses. Yeah, no, you, you like you, like no, you could go like comfortably yeah. for a week on a cruise and go to a, another country. You could even get the full liquor package and still not get to that amount. Do you know that? That's why I haven't gone on a Disney cruise because I'm dying. To I'm go done. On a I Disney would love cruise to go on a Disney because cruise. I, it, it's a, a Disney cruise. But the problem why like I've been so hesitant about a Disney cruise is because usually they're four day cruises. And they cost. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, they're 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 four shorter. Okay. I think they have some seven day okay, cruises, okay. but most of them are four day cruises, right? And they cost a lot more than a week cruise on Royal Caribbean, right? So I'm like, oh, you could probably go on a Virgin cruise for better to see the Virgin. The Scarlet Lady is more or less the same price as Royal Caribbean. It's like a tad a little bit. That's saying it's a little bit. I'm saying you can probably go on like right. you know right like splurge. But that's been my thing because I'm like I'm going to be paying so much more money. Yes, I know it's a Disney cruise. And yeah, I, but and I know that the restaurants are like incredible. But there comes a point where you. But have I'm to, like, you know, but I could get so much more th- value. Yeah, uh, you know, and, and on a nice ship, I could go on the freaking you know Symphony of the Seas or the Wonder of the Seas on Royal Caribbean, which is the world's biggest cruise ship, for a week. <laughs> You know, for yeah. a portion of the price that you're paying for four days on a Disney cruise. I mean, again, I would love to go on a Disney cruise, but it's always like, oh man, that value. The same reason I don't get the meatball sub at Subway. It's true. not a value. It's true. So now we can add Disney cruises and Subway to our growing list of sponsors we will never have. Yes, <laughs> we get Disney anything as a sponsor. That's it. I'm retiring. <laughs> We've made like, it. We've we made, made it. <laughs> it was like I'm retiring. Like we don't need to do anything else. Like <laughs> we can do full time chicken wings after that. <laughs> yeah, like just for fun. You know, so <laughs> Disney, get your shit together, make uh, it more affordable for sure. Oh, and oh, by the way, they don't have the yearly passes anymore. They don't have. Nope, they I, got rid of them. They did. They did. If you still have yours, you could use it, but you can't buy a new but one. But you can't buy a new one. Really? Yep. So yep. no annual passes no anymore. No annual passes. Why? Because if you have an annual pass, it does like under Google. That's true. Never right? <laughs> answered. The, the, asked and answered. Which I've told you that the whole thing with an annual pass, too, it's all psychological. Because if you have an annual pass, especially if you live in, in Miami, right. it's like, oh, oh, we got to use the annual pass. Right. Le, right? Le, le vamos a sacarle jugo. Yeah. Vamos a sacarle yeah. jugo, but that is a trip that you have to pay for, that you, you have to go to a... You have to pay the gas, you have to pay the tolls, you have to pay the hotel, you have to pay... The, right. right. When you're Disney, you're going to eat, you're going to buy shit, right. you know? So you're still making the money, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not right? losing money. But but obviously, it's, it is it is a bigger value. Yeah. So yeah, no, they got rid of them. So in other words, as a consumer, you're effed. Like, effed. Métete ratón. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oye, mi gente, Ish here, and with the holidays happening, we all know that we're about to get caught up in tremendo corre-corre. But that doesn't mean you can't enjoy something delicious while running holiday errands. There's only one solution for awesome Cuban food that's fast. Uh Uh-huh. You know we're talking about Cuban Guys restaurants. With five locations in South Florida, yeah, even one in Broward, there's no excuse to eat anything else when you're out and about. Beyond exhausted after Black Friday shopping all morning, swing by a Cuban Guys for pan con tortilla y, por supuesto, un 
café con leche. Hungry after waiting in line for hours to pick up el lechón? Have some Cuban guys fritas and un batido. The kids están jodiendo on the way to Tia Gloria's house? Pop in and grab a Juanito sandwich for them while you enjoy the Cuban guys sandwich. Cuban guys restaurants lo tiene todo and you can dine in or order ahead for pickup or delivery. Así que visit cubanguysrestaurants.com to find the nearest location and start enjoying the awesome Cuban food you deserve this holiday season. Well, I don't know about you. I'm a little parched. Ooh, soda time. I'm a little parched right now, so I think it's soda time. So um, it's funny because usually when we do our last sodas, um, we never know who the other one's going to do for their last soda. It's a surprise. It's always a surprise. But um, this week, we both we, we both kind of came to the table and we wanted to give our last soda to the same person. So, you know, we're, we're giving a, a double soda. <laughs> Um, we're going to give it to Richard Fierro. Now, for those who don't know, Richard Fierro is the, <clears throat> excuse me, is the man who really prevented the tragedy that happened in Colorado, Colorado Springs at Club Q from being so much worse than, than it ultimately was. You know, unfortunately we still did have five people killed and several people injured in, in that horrible, you know, domestic terrorism situation, um, that happened and this gentleman just happened to be there celebrating a friend's birthday with his wife, his daughter, um, their friends, actually his daughter's boyfriend, boyfriend who was one of the ones who was killed. Yeah. Um, and he is a former former military man. And he says that when he saw it happening, you know, he basically just jumped into action and, you know, went behind, you know, I don't, I don't want to say snuck up on the guy, but like the, from, from the description, it kind of sounds like he came from behind him, you know, was able to knock the, 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 the guns out of his hand and get him to the ground and started beating him while a drag performer stomped on him with his heel, which is my favorite part of, of this entire story. Um, but, you know, again, it just goes to show that you never know where you're going to be and in what situation. And this is a gentleman who, you know, already served our country once. You know, because he is a military man. Uh, he was in the military for, for years. And, you know, true heroism is not something that, it, that, that you know, you can put a, a bottle on or it has a time limit. And I just wanted to say, you know, on behalf of, of us and on behalf of, I don't know, the community and LGBT, everyone, you know, Latinos everywhere, um, you know, thank you, sir for just stepping up and, and, and stepping into action. And I also want to shamelessly plug because um, his wife, him and his wife own a brewery in Colorado Springs called Atrevida Beer. Oh, nice. And um, we should do a ping pong pollo pop up there. I'm saying, listen, listen, Fierro's, if you if you want, we will we'll figure it out. We will do a, a, a pop up over there and, and we'll collab. Um, but they do sell merch online. And so, you know, you guys can check them out on Instagram, check their link. I think it would be absolutely lovely if, you know, people feel the, the, the want or the urge to maybe buy shirts. The shirts are really cool. Like they say things like, um, you know, they're all about like how diversity and inclusion. Um, so they, these are people who really do walk the walk and talk the talk, not just in that horrible moment, but in their everyday lives. And I think she was even featured on like some Spike TV show like Brewmaster and stuff. And so um, these just seem like regular people who, you know, did something extraordinary. And, and dude, God bless you, you know. Yeah, um, it, it's when I read it, it was I mean, it was an amazing story because I feel that like in a moment like that, I mean, this man probably didn't even think about this. This was probably like he jumped into action. Well, he says... I, was he shooting at the time? Was he about to shoot? I don't know. I just knew I had to take him well, down. I, I saw an interview where he said, you know, I was there with my family. So if, if, if that's not the moment to protect your family, right, when is Right, That was his instinct, right? yeah. Um, I just think that, I mean, and we've talked about this a hundred times on the podcast, um, about the gun culture in America. Um, this is just the world that we live in. And... You know, I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know what it... Yeah, the whole gun thing is something that, like, I... You know, it's a very complicated issue that, you know, what what do a lot of people, I believe, as well. Complicated issues don't have easy solutions. Of course not. It's not as easy as, no like, well, we're going to ban this, and we're going to ban that, and we're going to do this. It's not that easy. We have a gun culture problem in the U.S., right? Right. And when other countries that are similar to the U.S. don't have this problem, and we do... Um, 
it's not the guns, quote unquote. Right. It, we have a gun culture problem right. in this country. Um, and a mental health issue. Of course. Mental health is, is a huge of course. issue here. But, I mean, this is just a world that we live in now. And, and I, I, I imagine that you're going to see more and more cases like this of everyday persons becoming heroes and jumping into action because this is the world that we live in now. Yeah. So I, I think that, God forbid, you never want to be in that situation where you realize there's a shooting going on. But I think that there's people now, now I think that we're in an age where you know it's life or death, so it's now or never. So right. we have to do something. Like like this man did, jumped yeah. into action to try to save his family yeah right because this is just the world that mm -hmm. we live in and 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 at the risk of being snarky you know a drag performer and an unarmed military vet did what well how now, many how many officers in uvalde yeah, did it, well now, didn't want like, to the whole thing with the drag performer the story has changed now they said that it was well, a trans well, 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 well I, I, but that's why i say i believe it was a drag performer right like uh, not not a drag queen it was somebody who was performing in drag whatever whatever that meant i don't right. know but then i heard that it was a, a, a trans, trans woman yes. like we're not sure so you know our hats off to that person as but well. but again everyday um, people did what officers in uvalde texas Essentially, could not be bothered to. Yeah, that, that's a whole other. I mean, th this is a topic that, like, sometimes you know, when these type of things happen, um, you know, we realize that we're a current events podcast, and we like to keep a nice flow, and and you know, people listen to us yeah. in good times. This is like a holiday weekend, yeah, so yeah. sometimes it's hard to talk about these things because it's like you know, people aren't talking, aren't listening, tuning in to like yeah. us talking about these tragedies. Well, and what can we contribute? But right to, but, to these conversations. But, but it's like sometimes it's hard not to talk about. Yeah them so you know i'm glad we spoke about it in the end you know in the in the, in the realm of a last soda so you know he he gets all the sodas he wants all the sodas he wants especially because yeah. he has a brewery which we definitely need to to figure out how to get yeah, but, there. but it's great like to support them absolutely you know? um i mean i think it's the least that people can do so anyway bueno that was our post thanksgiving yes uh black friday episode yes we hope everybody has a great weekend this is all you know it's sort of a holiday weekend yeah, still small business saturday don't forget yeah, you can you can see us at jay wakefield on on saturday for starting at 1 p.m right so if you're going to do day drinking and you're in the winwood area go drink at jay wakefield and have ping pong pollo. yes and then say but but Okay, but don't overdo it with a bean pump oil. Save some space because then you can go to Night Owl Cookies where Burger Beast is having his pop up as well. Yes. So you know, have some bur have some have a beer at Jay Wakefield, have some of our wings, then go do dessert after you, you have, have the burger. Right, I mean, you go, you go, you have your Burger Beast burger, and then you have your Night Owl cookie, yes. and then you can go home. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, they don't have to go home. Well, but I'm saying, you know, they, so, but puede ir tranquilito y, yeah. you know, like happy. So, any, but anyway, we hope you, everybody listened, laughed, and learned. And as always, remember to grab your pastelito, your croqueta, and your cafecito. And thank you so much for joining us. All right, mijete. We only have a few episodes left this season. I know. I think we have like two or three. Wow. Anyway, have a great weekend, everybody. Go ahead and say bye. Pero Let Me Tell You is co-hosted by Darian Borges and Ismaeliano, produced by Ismaeliano, and our theme, Pero Let Me Tell You Freestyle, is composed by Michael Angelo Lomlaplex, the official gay guy. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. All right, everybody. So it is Black Friday, and mm -hmm. we got a special treat for people. So you, so you heard him already. He's he's already aching to just get on this microphone. We got with us this week again. We got Tristan. Oh yeah, your your appearances are becoming a little more frequent. Yes. Right. A little a little more often. I love it. It used to be ten weeks, but now it's like I think like two it's weeks. Like every, it's a little random now, but I like it. I like the random of it all because then people never know when they're gonna get that yeah. dose of Tristan. Right. Yeah, we should do that. I like it. I like it. All right. So it's Black Friday. Holidays are coming up, and I know a lot of people are probably going to be getting Legos for Christmas, right? But you, sir, already got a gigantic Lego before Christmas. Oh, tell the listeners what you got. The globe. The globe. This kid got the friggin' world as a Lego. <laughs> it's the world. It's a globe. I have two worlds. I also have the world map. Oh, the map. That's right. It's 11,000 pieces. Okay, but and how many pieces is the globe? I think like 2,000. That's it? And the other one was 11,000? The, the map? The map? Yeah, the world map was 11,695. Mm -hmm. And the one down there was 2,500 something. Oh, wow. I would think it would be more. Because it's round and it's got, you know, circles. I don't know. Yeah. No. So, okay. 
What made you look at the globe Lego and be like, I want to do that one. I want to try that one. Ever since, like, I think, I think February or March of this year, mm-hmm. I've been wanting it, like... Yeah, like, but, what, but what made you look at it and be like, I could do that? Because I wouldn't say that. I look at that and I'm like, nope, that's too hard for me. I don't know. I just wanted it because I thought it looked cool. Yeah? So you started it this week already, right? I started it yesterday and I'm already, like, halfway done. Well, not well, halfway, actually. No, I was going to say, you're not halfway yeah, done. I'm not halfway done. Actually, there's 16 bags and I'm only on bag five. Okay, well, that's, that's like, a third. Well, actually, I, j- I just finished bag four. Oh, like... Earlier, like while I was out, <laughs> like ten minutes ago. Oh dang! Okay. No, all you're right. already here. Oh, I was here. I had gone back. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So, all right. I have a very, 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 very important question. Now, this globe is not small. It is a globe. It is the size of a globe. It moves. It is big. Where are you gonna put this thing? That thing is huge. That, I don't know. Also, it's not that big. <laughs> It's big enough. It's only one foot tall and like, I think, it's like 10 inches wide. Okay, that's still big enough. Like, that take up, it, what I mean is, it just, it takes up space. I mean, because it's not like something small you can put in a corner. Like, it's a pretty, it's a globe. It's a functioning globe. Because it spins, right? And then what about, they don't let me tell you season two. Well, what about it? I don't know. Okay, well, we're talking about the globe. Come on, bring it back to the globe. I want, I want to hear about the globe and I want to hear about the Legos. So... It, but, okay, so you don't know where you're going to put it at when you're done? No. <laughs> You've got a lot of them that are already done that are beautiful. Like the the the, hey, the the pyramid. That one looks really cool. What about the Statue of Liberty? The Statue, oh, the Statue of Liberty was cool, too. I really liked it. So, But you're not going to put them up in your room? Because right now you have them in the dining room, like on the little credenza I in the like back. I like to put the architecture sets in the dining room. Okay, so you have some in your room. I think there's only, like, one architecture set in my room. Oh, okay. Which one? The White House. The White House, okay. Actually, there's two versions of it. I, there's two versions of it, but I got the one from 2010. There's two White Houses? Yeah, an updated one. I, th- I don't know when it was created, but mm-hmm. there's one that was created in 2010 that that's the one I have. Oh, okay. Interesting. I didn't. Know, I thought they just had the one. I didn't know that there was more than, than one, like, set of there's the White two. House. Cool, interesting. All right, but then, so what are some of the ones that you have in your room, like the non-architecture ones? Because I know you got some stuff in there, too. Some, like, non-architecture Legos. I got a lot of techs. I have, I have a lot of Technic sets. What's Technic? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You have them. You built them. Uh, vehicles. Vehicles? Oh, okay, okay. Oh. So, all right, now that you have the globe, what's next, dude? Like, what's the next, like, big, you know... I feel like this is an accom. It's gonna take a while. This is gonna take a while because you, you know, you gotta, you gotta sit and think and work. I want the Colosseum, but that's too the big. The Colosseum? Yeah, it's too big though. Okay. Yeah, I would imagine it's probably. Nine thousand pieces. Okay. It's so, the fourth biggest Lego set. The fourth. What is the biggest? The, the world map. Yeah. And what's number two? Paris. Not Paris. Um, uh, Eiffel Tower. I have, I have Paris. Um, it's the Eiffel Tower. You have the 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 the, the little well, the little the, Paris, the right? Eiffel- the yeah. one that is like the Arctic Film. The Eiffel Tower hasn't come out yet. It's actually coming out on Black Friday. Ah, uh, when this episode drops. So you see, yes. guys, you see, if you're looking for Legos, the latest one is coming out on Black Friday. Tristan's got the scoop, man. He knows what's going on. It's six hundred thirty dollars. Okay, maybe you, maybe I no, maybe we don't buy it. That's too expensive. No, <laughs> that's a lot of money, bro. Like those those things are expensive. Like right, or, or is it just me? Like Legos are expensive, no? <laughs> well, you're giving a thumbs up. That doesn't work well on an audio medium. They can't see you, dude. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing about Legos. I think they're cool, and I don't have the patience for them, but they're really expensive. Like, the most expensive one is, I think, a map. with That was only actually $250. Oh, that, damn, that is cheap considering how many pieces it has. So, it, go ahead. The top five Lego sets, or top five biggest. Okay. One, the world map. Two, the Eiffel Tower, coming out when this episode releases. Th- th- three, uh, the Titanic. Oh, do you have that one? You have you have a Titanic, but not the Lego one. A copy of Lego. Right. Uh, number four, Colosseum, and mm-hmm. number five, 
the, I think the Millennium Falcon. <gasps> Ooh, that's some cool shit right there. The Millennium Falcon. You a Star Wars fan? No. No! I, I mean, I, I haven't watched it yet. Okay, okay, that's fair, that's fair. Wait, your dad has not made you watch any of the Star Wars as I big of a fan as he is? I watched the Mandalorian. I watched a little bit of the first movie, but that's all. Okay, all right. Yeah, because your dad's a huge fan of Star Wars. I'm surprised he hasn't, like, forced you to watch it. <laughs> just sat you down there and put, like, toothpicks in your eyes so you can't close them while you're watching the movie. I can just remove them. I mean, you could, yes. I, I suppose that's the thing that could happen, too. Yeah. This is the thing that I can do when he removes... Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah, he was showing me something on the computer. But again, this is an audio medium, not visual. They can't <laughs> see that, dude. We gotta explain everything because they can't see it. You can make a video podcast on Spotify. I could, but then that's an additional production that I don't have time to do. <laughs> so that's why I don't do it. But I could. True. Yep. All right. Well, anything else you want to tell us about about your Legos or about Legos? Like any other cool stuff coming down the pike? Like it's coming out. I mean, I know the big one like this, the Eiffel Tower, obviously. But anything else you're looking forward to, or you're like, hmm. Maybe I'll get this one. No? I want the Coliseum. The Coliseum. All right. Well, then I guess we will close out by saying, whoever's listening, Tristan wants the damn Coliseum of Legos. So if you can make it happen, make it happen. Please? <laughs> All right. Okay. Start a freaking fundraiser. There you go. We can start a, we can start a GoFundMe to get you your, your Coliseum Legos. That's a good use of, of a GoFundMe, I'm sure. All right. Well, as always, Tristan, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm so glad we get to do this a little more often now. And listeners, you know what? You never know when he's going to pop back on. So stay tuned. Wait, wait. Hey. What? Well, bye. Doors, floor, doors update coming in December. I don't know what he said. I think it was ASMR, but we're going to go ahead and leave. Yes. <laughs>